Welcome to Learn and Love Music. I'm pleased to present this wonderful session on Tchaikovsky's Concerto No. 1, probably the most famous piano concerto ever written. But I want to look into the beauty of the melodies in this concerto. I picked out five places in this concerto that are just exquisite, and it's all about the melodies. I want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our channel. We want to see you back again. So let's dig into this wonderful piece, Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto Number 1. Melody Number 1. At the very opening, the orchestra takes charge right from the beginning. Here, the wonderful part that we just heard were the chords, but the melody underneath is what it's all about. What makes this first melody so glorious? We know the chords in the piano give it that sort of electric kind of feeling to it. But what happens with the tune itself? The tune is very simple. Um, in the beginning, it's just this. I love the, f the part of the melody that falls down. It sort of has this falling kind of feeling, almost like as if the music is going over a waterfall. It, it, that's, I think, is what makes it really exciting. And there are also are some spots where Tchaikovsky and the orchestra part, besides that melody, he'll throw in these accents that go downward, kind of like, like that waterfall feeling. So here we have... Right here... As a pianist, I love to hear that sound of those triplets going down, kind of flowing down, because it gives you so much, it sort of uplifts you in a way as you're playing that beautiful melody in the piano. And of course, later on, a couple pages in, Tchaikovsky doesn't make... When the pianist comes in, they play dotted rhythms, and the dotted rhythms also energize the melody, the melody is already beautiful, but to put those dotted rhythms in, that's what makes it really special. Of course, we all know what happens here. There's pizzicato rolling chords in the orchestra. Piano. pianists, I'll let you in on a little secret. In this passage, we have dotted rhythms. Of course, a lot of times when you play dotted rhythms, you want to play the beat. The beat. But what gives it much more energy, if you're playing this piece, put the accent on the 32nd note, the fast note. And so instead of that, we'll do this. So as we do it faster, you'll notice that the 32nd note sort of jumps out at us because I'm purposefully trying to bring out that note. Here's what it sounds like when I play. Listen for that 32nd note that comes in big and loud and fast. when looking at all of the Russian repertoire. Russians don't like to do this. They like to do... Uh, and again. Always give the energy to the fast note. It just really energizes the music fabulously. Melody number two. This is the slow theme that comes in sort of in the development section. Here we have a big contrast. It's very lyrical, it's quiet, it's beautiful. Tchaikovsky marks dolce e molto espressivo, sweetly with much expression. And the opening is in D flat major, very bright and exciting. This is in a minor key. It's a big change from the excitement in the beginning. This is more beauty, beauty and lyricism. And the orchestra has the theme first, then the pianist comes in with this beautiful sound. Dolce e molto espressivo.
And here's a tip for you pianists. Make sure you connect everything. All of those notes are connected. So it's very lyrical, almost like as if a violinist is playing with one long bow. You want to have that as different from the opening as possible. And included in this beautiful theme that we heard, there's a secondary theme. And this time, it's the violins, violas, bassoon, and contrabass. And their melody sounds like this. A tempo tranquillo, even slower. Here it is. And what follows in this same section is that same theme in the piano, but this time the piano decorates the music so beautifully. Another great moment in this piece, and this is what it sounds like with the decoration in the piano part. That last phrase, I always think of it like a question. It's like, why? It's, it's really a fabulous part. There's so many places in this piece that are not only exciting, but they're beautiful and they're very musical. Now let's look at the second movement. It's a slow movement, beautiful, lyrical, but it has the most wonderful melodies in this section. In fact, he marks Andantino Semplice, which means a slow tempo, but not too slow, and simply, simply. And I love the when the flute comes in, above the music, he writes dolcissimo, which not only means just sweet, but very sweetly. Before we hear the flute melody, we hear all of the strings plucking, pizzicato, something like this. I can't really do it so well on the piano, but it sounds like this. So the feeling here is, is rhythmic because of the pizzicato strings plucking along. But when the piano enters, I find it interesting that Tchaikovsky doesn't write the, the tempo marking or the how many beats per minute until he gets to this spot. So he writes 54, which is a slower tempo than what the Andantino. So what he wants is he wants this section to be more espressivo, a little bit slower than the opening, but really absolutely gorgeous music. Here's the piano part. So continuing on in this same sort of dreaminess, the orchestra has this beautiful theme, sounds like this, and you'll find that underneath you have the lower instruments, the, the celli and the bass, and they're doing sort of this offbeat. Almost as if they're in a different time signature. They're giving three, four, but up, up above the wonderful upper instruments, flute and uh, other winds are doing this melody. And then the piano answers with, it, with its own melody. Same music.
can't sing very well. What was I singing? I sang a horn part, and then I sang an oboe part, and then I sang a clarinet part, and a bassoon part. Four different wind instruments playing the melody over and over again. But the great part is the decoration of the piano above all of those four winds underneath. And melody number four. Like the first time, the violins start and then the whole orchestra comes in. Listen to this melody. It's in D-flat major. Interesting that this piece is in B-flat minor, which is also five flats. But when he wants to have these really beautiful melodies, he goes to the major key. And that's what makes them so great. Here it is. Violins. But the piano shows up the orchestra. The piano does not play in a simple fashion. The melody is still there, but listen to the rippling 16th notes around the melody. I love this place. It gets you ready for the excitement at the end of the concerto, but more so it gives you that sense of warmth and musicality that is so intrinsically Tchaikovsky. Here it is. goes into some more uh, staccato notes and all of that. But that melody, I think that's the high point of the piece, at least for me, in a very quiet way, but a very dramatic way. And finally, melody number five. There's a long tutti section, which is kind of complex and going through lots of keys. But I always remember when I performed this piece, just the excitement that builds up as you hear this. It's almost as if he's creating this tension for the solo player to get ready for the big ending. And it is a grand entrance for sure. When we get to that, I'll play the last couple measures of the orchestra part. It's built up to this frenzy, and then the octaves begin. This is where it's lots of fun. Here we go, right before. <laughs> ending to a piano concerto. Wouldn't you agree? So I've given you five wonderful melodies in this Tchaikovsky piano concerto number one. Make sure you check it out with the full orchestra and you'll get the impact of it. It is so glorious. It's such a wonderful, wonderful piece. Thanks for watching Learn Love Music. We'll see you next time. I'm Dwayne Hulbert.